Hi, and welcome back to another episode on How to Hack. So today we're discuss something a little more different. It's about how you can turn your Macintosh book into a hacking platform, and especially your laptop, because a laptop is highly mobile, and if you belong to the RAID team, your penetration tester, chances are you won't have the luxury of a powerful desktop to go around your customer enterprise client site to do penetration testing. Chances are you're using a laptop machine, and it could be a Macintosh, it could be a Windows machine, but today we're going to focus on Macintosh machine and how you can turn it into a hacking toolbox for you so that you can perform reconnaissance, you can exploit meter printer shells, get reverse shells onto the machines, check for vulnerabilities across the entire network. And uh, over here, I have a demo for you. So we got a Macintosh book here. And a Macintosh book is going to help us be able to understand as a Linux variant about some of the tools that we can install like Network Mapper as well as Meter Preter. So Network Mapper and Meter Preter are going to be two of the services or technologies we're going to use along with Macintosh to help us do rate teaming or penetration testing activities as a whole so that we know that when we get to a, an enterprise environment, an enterprise network through wireless access or conducting wireless audits, we'll be able to use a similar platform and conduct those tests and attacks across the environment. So without further ado, let's get started on today's tutorial. So over here, I have a terminal running on Macintosh. So as you know, Mac is a variant of Linux and Mac is also open source. So that's really cool. And the next thing, next thing you want to check out is that because I've installed Nmap, so if I enter Nmap, again, the installation instructions, I followed quite a number of tutorials. I'm going to put up the link below so that we don't have to go through those very basic, simple instructions of installing services or tools into our Macintosh machine. So this will help you accelerate a whole pace of understanding how you can actually have a mobile laptop that allows you to perform a lot of penetration testing. So that's really critical. So what over here we can do is we can actually do a IF config. So if I enter IF config very quickly, I would see that I have a specific IP address over here of 192.168.11. So this would mean that we are actually running on a 192.168.1.1 dot one all the way to 255 sub network so over here this will allow us to most likely be able to see the range of ip addresses operating within this sub network so go ahead and enter nmap and if you enter nmap of course you can see the different kind of terminals that you can insert into it's exactly what you see in Kali linux so over here we're gonna do a ping sweep so this would let us know what are the hosts that are available within the environment and with that in mind this allow us to actually be able to find out all the live machines and when you do that the ping ship is going to take some time it's going to take some time to complete the scan so what we're going to do is we're going to click shell we're going to open up a new basic window so the new basic window again i'm going to do a command plus so this will allow us to zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see and I've also entered uh, what we call the MSF console. I've installed Metasploit into Macintosh. So I'm going to go ahead and enter MSF console. So again, I've not updated my MSF update since I installed the ball a few weeks back. And again, if we go back to MMAP, of course, it is still trying to complete the scan across the entire network of 255 IP addresses. So over here, this is exactly what you see when you have Call Linux running or Ubuntu or any other Linux variants, as well as if you're running on Windows. You'll be able to see this once you enter into Metasploit. And of course, with that in mind, you can very quickly be able to search for a different kind of exploits. You can enter search, for example, SMB. So this will tell you all the SMB vulnerabilities or different kind of payloads or different kind of exploits you could use. So of course, as you scroll up, we have auxiliary scanner. So if you were, you've been following these, the channel, you actually see some of the different tutorials and we're using different kind of exploits, scanners, auxiliary to actually perform the attack. And this makes it really, really interesting. So the next thing I want to share with you is actually VirtualBox. So if I hit VirtualBox, I also have VirtualBox running on my Macintosh. So again, the idea is you can simulate different kind of environments. So I have a Kali Linux running. I have a Windows 7, 7 32-bit, Windows 7, 64-bit. So I can go ahead and look at the settings of Kali Linux. So we can see the system. Again, it has one gigabyte of RAM. It has hot disk space, the storage, the display, and, and many others. And we can actually go ahead 
and boot it up once the setting is right. So over here, I have a bridge adapter. So bridge adapter allow us to get the same IP address within the same SAT network. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And if I go back to the terminal, uh, again, Nmap has completed the scan. So if you see over here, we have a Nmap scan report. So it says .1, .254. Uh, it only managed to find two hosts and why is that the case is because my other operating systems which are running in the environment actually have a firewall so when there's a firewall uh, chances are icmp is not going to be able to pick it up so easily so you got to use other techniques to actually be able to find out the live machines in the environment so going back here i am running color linux so again color linux has a lot more capabilities than your macintosh which could be just installing a couple of modules but in a moment we are actually going to show how we could hijack into a windows environment and i'm going to show that in a moment so over here i'm just going to enter my password to get us into the call linux box just to show you how we could have virtualized environments within our mobile hacking platform on macintosh so over here we are building call linux in a moment i'll be building a windows 764 bit and then we're going to do a SMB attack against the Windows machine. So we're just going to mimic exactly what hackers do. So chances are you could be in a hotel, you could be in a conference, you could be at a client office that has many important and critical machines that has many different kind of critical data. So again, we are just trying to highlight some of these capabilities that you can have by running virtualized environment within your Macintosh environment. So within your Mac, you could boot any kind of operating systems as long as you have some kind of virtualization technology within it. So here, as you can see very clearly, I have root at Kali. And of course, I can enter ifconfig. Likewise, I'll get the IP address of 192.168.1.2. So I'm going to exit this because today's tutorial is not so much about running the virtual box for for call Linux, but it's about other things. So I'm going to power off the machine. And I'm going to go back into VirtualBox. I'm going to open up Windows 7 64-bit. So again, we are trying to mimic the environment of what may happen once you enter into an environment. And that's the whole point. Because today's tutorial is for you to understand that once you've gained access into a wireless access point, once you've gained access into a network, and then you are able, through your scans, be able to find out what are the machines running in the environment, then what can you do? So that's a very important point for us. So over here, we are going to log in to a user on Windows 7 Ultimate. And of course, uh, I have an expired Windows machine. So over here, uh, it's gonna, gonna get any updates or any other things like that. So we're gonna go into CMD and CMD is gonna very quickly be able to tell us the IP address of this particular machine. So uh, I'm gonna enter IP config. So we see the IP address is 192.168.1.13. So going back to Macintosh, we're going to load a couple of modules for us to actually do scanning, to understand exactly what's going on on that machine. So this allow us a lot of control of what we can do in the environment. And this is, this is critical for us and this is very important because this allows us more control. So for example, if I search MS17010, it's going to show up a number of things. So the first thing we want to do is again, if you remember the all the tutorials that we have done before, Again, this is the SMB vulnerability that we have managed to actually find. So MS17 and then followed by the scanner. So scanner MS17, SMB MS17. So when we hit that, we can enter show options. So again, this is exactly what you see in Kali Linux when you have Metasploit running on the environment. And likewise, all you got to do is actually just set the R host to the IP address of the Windows machine. So over here, the IP address 192.168.1.13. And this allow us the ability to set the IP address. And then of course, when you hit exploit, this straight away scan the machine, and we see that this machine is highly likely vulnerable to MS17. So what we're trying to do here, again, like I said, we're trying to mimic a live environment where you got access into a enterprise environment, you got your hacking box running, and the next thing you wanna do is to try to gain access into some of this machine. So of course, with this in mind, we can go ahead and use exploit Windows SMB followed by MS17010 and then followed by Eternal Blue. So once you set that, you enter show options. So this again, let us know uh, what are the IP address that we're gonna set forth. So again, 192.168.1.13 is the victim's IP address. 
So it could be from a ping strip that you that you swipe across the enterprise network environment and you manage to find the IP address. So you set the R host and of course you can set the process name to lsass.exe. So this gives us a lot more authority and privileges once we gain access to the system by exploiting the particular in payload injection into the executable. And of course, once we have done that, we got to see the payloads that we can load alongside so that this gives us a lot more control as part of post exploit. So we want to have a shell, we want to have a meter preter shell and then many other capabilities. So we're going to set the payload as Windows X64 followed by meter preter because we know that it's a 64 bit machine followed by reverse TCP so that we can bypass the firewall. And of course, we got to enter IF config and we need to set our L host where we'll be hosting the listener. So of course, our IP address is 192.168.1.11. So we're going to go ahead and enter the L host as 192.168.1.11. And once you have that, all you got to do is hit exploit. And let, let's do a show options uh, just to double check our work. So we got our host correct. We got process name correct. We got the L host set right and we got our payload set forth. So all you got to do is enter exploit. And once you have exploit, you'll be sending the payload over to the victim's machine. And once you got access into the victim's machine, you'll be prompted with a metapreter shell. So again, over here, we see success. We have metapreter shell. We have successfully gotten access into the machine. All you got to do is enter sysinfo, you enter ps, you can see the processes they are running in the environment. And you can also run post exploitation attacks like Windows, Gather and Hashdump. Again, all of this were shown on the earlier tutorials. And when you, the only difference right now is that you have a Macintosh that is built for penetration testing that can help you accelerate the whole pace of going after machines in the environment. So there you've seen it, how quickly we could turn a Macintosh by installing Network Maple as well as Metapreter and VirtualBox. And you'll be able to either set up a test environment, boot up Kali Linux, or boot up any testing operating systems, be able to gain access to it. And you can see the entire network of IP addresses or IP enabled assets and be able to conduct your reconnaissance, be able to conduct your active attacks, be able to do information gathering and many, many other different kinds of techniques and attacks that you can do and perform by having a mobile system. So with mobility, it allows you to move from different enterprises offices to different parts of the buildings and different parts of the offices around a client's place. So they could have many, many offices across the whole world and having a mobile laptop allows you to fly it over to different areas, conduct different penetration testing. And alongside that, this gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of agility and you can really be able to operate like a computer hacker who may be testing out for different kind of wireless vulnerabilities across and different different kind of wireless access points so again they could be using different models of wireless access points again there's a lot of flexibility a lot of modular platforms that you can further install in your macintosh that we'll discuss probably on the subsequent videos so with that i hope you learned something valuable today and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And thank you so much for watching.